Welcome you guys to another edition of the Gringo Show. I'm your host Adrian Babishoff and this is Exploring Awesome Alternatives you guys. So today we're going to talk about parasites. Parasites, there's thousands, millions of people infected with them every year. Um, there's, they're all, there's many types of them. They're living in your cats. You're getting it from your cat feces, from our, our, our enjoyment of having these animals around us. Uh, there's par people are freaking out, man. There's people saying that this is contributing to cancer. This is, this is what all ailments and everything's all about is is parasites. And there's other people saying that not so quite the the case. And today we're gonna explore that, dude. Let's jump right in. So welcome, guys. Here we go. Uh, I want to tell you guys what I've done is done a bunch of research online. And I thought that I had parasites. Let's start off with that. I thought I had parasites. I'm still not sure if I've got parasites. But through the research I've been doing, I'm kind of on the fence of going, eh, I don't think this is something I quite have to freak out about. Um, let me read you guys some of the symptoms and I'll tell you why. We're going to go through the symptoms here and I'm, gonna, I'm just going to read them off to you guys. <clears throat> Symptoms include mood disorders, depression, anxiety, suicidal thoughts, very irritable. Strong cravings for processed foods and sugary foods. Anemia or iron deficiencies, worm can create enough blood loss to cause anemia or iron deficiency. Skin ailments such as hives, rashes, weeping, eczema, itchy dermatitis, acne, ulcers, sores, lesions, etc. Reoccurring yeast infections like candida, bleeding gums, headaches, restlessness or anxiety, nervousness as waste products from parasites irritate the nervous system, teeth grinding, drooling during sleep, food allergies, food sensitivities, loss of appetite, sexual dysfunction in men, menstrual cycle problems in women, chronic fatigue, constantly tired, craving foods you know are bad for you, persistent digestive problems, cramps, bloating, gas, Hungry all the time, sore stiff joints, breathing problems, itching especially around the mouth, nose and anus, memory problems. That's just a couple. So you guys see what I've learned is a lot of these ailments can be aligned with so many things. So many things you've got you've got doctors if they if they tell you that you've got parasites, it's easy to just go, "Well, tell me all your symptoms." Yeah, it looks like fucking parasites. Uh, let's not look into what your your diet is. I heard there's one that's not in here was you have constipation and you also have diarrhea. I guess they're alternating or or if you have one or the other. It's like, come on, man. Really? So I'm not, I don't want to knock it just yet because I'm not sure. I've been wrong so many times in my life. But if you look at this list that I gave you, it just lines right up there with everything else. So very easy to just go, hey, I've got parasites. In fact, I heard some stories of people coming in saying, I've got parasites and like, well, whoa, 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 tell me what your situation is. And the person's just so convinced, you know, that they've got parasites in them. So they go do a cleanse and things like that and supposedly feel better. Uh, but I think uh, maybe a lot of that stuff's in placebo. That's some mental stuff that's going on. Uh, who knows? But uh, so let's get into, we got these symptoms and... Um, most of the information that I got for you guys today is is from Google, YouTube, and a, stumbling upon a podcast by uh, the Yin and Yang podcast. Really blew me blew my mind in all the research I did. Uh, they did a uh, a a podcast with a guy by the name of Lee Lickens. He's a professor at the University of Missouri, Kansas City, and this guy is a parasitologist. He he really digs down deep. This is what he does for a living. He actually taught one of these guys uh he's one of these guys from the yin yang podcast was uh, one of his students and uh he just he's into biology all kinds so he's a straight up professor who studies teaches parasitology and i kind of like the approach that he's taking more than these these uh i don't want to call them snake juice sellers but some of these holistic people and the, and doctors both i think our whole entire idea of our relationship with parasites is that we're at war and it might not be the case but we'll get into that a little bit later so let's look exactly what is the definition of a parasite definition of a parasite you guys is 
An organism that lives in or on another organism, its host, and benefits by deriving nutrients at the host's expense. Uh, so in the, the, the podcast I heard, I don't want to give too much away. You guys should really go take a listen to it. I'll have it in the description of the links below. Uh, very profound, very profound there. Um, but it, they were considering, uh, um, let's read it one more time. An organism that lives in or on another organism, its host, and benefits by deriving nutrients at the host's expense uh, and basically not giving anything in return. Um, what they were saying is that a baby is considered a parasite. Uh, if you think about it, it's born, it's in utero, it's taking the nutrients from the mother, the blood, and, and he's everything it, it, to survive by latching onto its mother uh, until it is born and then it has you know it drinks milk and then that's it unless on like on the podcast all the money they can become a par parasite i'm just kidding i love my kids but uh i had to throw one in there because i know a lot of shitty people who by definition a person who habitually relies on or exploits others and gives nothing in return <gasps> excuse me boy i know i think a lot of us know a lot of these people so humans in some sense i think friends family could definitely be under the categories of parasites um we have three basic types of parasites we have a protozoa which is a single cell organism that lives inside the body uh, we also have a helminth it's a multi multi-celled organism that lives inside the body uh, it's like worms, flatworms, ringworms, roundworms, tapeworms, etc. So there's a there's a single cell and a multi-celled organism. We have the ectoparasites that live off our skin uh, and our blood. Things well, I guess maybe not our blood lives lives off of or in our skin. Mosquitoes, bed bugs, ticks, fleas, mites, lice, bot flies, um, which is pretty crazy. I saw that if you guys ever saw that YouTube video with a bot fly, it actually. They, they took it out of the lady's skull, the bot fly. So the bot fly, let me explain that one. Since uh, it is a parasite considered, the bot fly will actually, it, it's a very large fly. So when it starts flying at you, you you're kind of like, get the fuck off me, get away. This thing's, it's just so, it's, it's, uh, it's evolution was wrong in this, in the sense that it's so big. It's like the size of a bee, I guess. So you're automatically swatting it. It's very, uh, highly unlikely it, it doesn't have a very good chance of attaching itself and laying its eggs on you uh, the better so what it figured out I mean think about this guys this bot fly figured out to go and attach itself to grab a mosquito and it basically I think it just incapacitates the mosquito mid-air mid fucking air incapacitates it lays its eggs on the mosquitoes ass when that mosquito comes and lands on you, which you can't see because he's quiet and stealth. His evolution was far on that aspect, <clears throat> far more successful than the bot fly. Once it set, the mosquito sets on your skin and starts to bite you, as soon as the eggs sense that there's heat, they drop off the mosquito's ass onto your skin, burrow their way in. I'm not sure if I forget if they actually go through the wound, which would be really, really uh, intelligent design. Uh, but you see how they get transferred. I mean, that is like, that's crazy, crazy evolution. The study of the parasites I've been doing is just, I'm no longer kind of so much uh, worried about having parasites. I'm like, I'm intrigued by these, I'm fascinated by these guys. In fact, on that subject, the entire movie of the, the Aliens with Sigourney Weaver, uh, the guy who wrote the stories and everything completely confessed that he engineered the entire story evolving uh, uh evolved from uh the story of parasites and he thought in his mind what would it be if we actually had a parasite the size of humans or or larger you know uh fascinating fascinating stuff i don't know if you guys seen i think it's the uh round worm it's actually got that round mouth with teeth around it, it attaches to your intestines and just slowly starts to 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 grab on it latches on and starts eating i guess the 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 food and nutrients and it actually will, will latch on so it doesn't fly away uh you know get blown away by uh, all the passing stuff uh pretty amazing pretty pretty amazing so let's uh let's take a look at what the fuck's happening in the united states what kind of species do we so-called have according to the information that uh that i found 
Um, let's take a look. I'm gonna read these out to you guys. More than 300,000 people living in the United States are infected with Typhonosoma cruzi, the parasite that causes Chagas disease, and more than 300 infected babies are born every year. Oh, that's that's nuts. That's it's, you know what I've learned too is that uh, Giardia is actually a parasite. I thought it was a uh, bacteria, but it's actually I guess a parasite that that floats in the in the water. Um, number two, there are at least 1,000 hospitalizations for symptomatic cyst. Disorsosis per year in the United States. Sorry, I'm gonna fuck all these up. I have, I don't know Latin. Um, at least 14% of the U.S. population, 14% has been exposed to Toxicara, the parasite that causes toxicoriasis. And each year, at least 70 people, most of them children, are blinded by the resulting eye disease. I think I fucking seen this one where there was a, they're pulling this chick's. They're pulling her, her eye open, her eyelids stretching it, and they're rolling the eyeball around. And then next thing you know, they, there's this little worm wriggling underneath the, the film of the eye. Oh my God, it, it's intense. I can't even, can you imagine having your eyes open, having them, this worm, you can see it go across your, your, your retina, you know, you can just actually see them floating through as they're cutting them out. I mean, oh my God, that shit just freaks me out. What's crazy is they're so small. And they're just like, reminds me of that movie Ant-Man, if you haven't seen it, where he's just microscopic. We got these intelligent beings that are super microscopic and you can't fucking see them and they're out to get you. Anyways, more than 60 million people in the United States are chronically infected with Toxoplasma Gandhi, the parasite that causes Toxoplasmosis. New infections in pregnant women can lead to birth defects and infections in those with compromised immune systems can be fatal. I think the Toxoplasma is the uh, the one that's in the cat. This is Toxoplasmosis. Yes, that's it. That's the one that is in the cat. That's the one that's in the fecal. Uh, it basically goes into, well, we'll get into that later on. Crazy, crazy. What did they say? 60 million people in the United States are infected with that. That's a very large, alarming number. And I'm sure it's... I mean, how can you not be freaked out about these statistics and these numbers and things like that? Um, I know I definitely am, kind of, not, but I digress. One last one is the trichomoniasis. Can cause pregnancy problems and increase the risk of other sexually transmitted infections, including HIV. The trichomonas parasite is extremely common, affecting 3.7 million people in the United States, although it is easily treatable. Um, some of these things they're saying if people have HIV they're more susceptible to them but listen to all the information that's just bouncing around out there it's like what the fuck which one do I even adhere to which one do I even take serious like I just wanted to know do I have parasites do I not and it just seems like it just turns into this almost like a lot of the research I've done it just turns into this wide massive pros and cons where you're going my god I don't even know which one to believe um, so we've identified uh, a number of them that are in the United States people that are infected people think it's you know indigenous but people third world countries and stuff like that uh, no it's right here at your doorstep supposedly in your butthole <laughs> sorry man that's the way it goes it's it's it's, it's true talk man we got to get true talk out there uh, there's no how the hell am I supposed to make this more pleasant you know what I mean uh, I mean you'll we'll get into the testing I mean how to test yourself for parasites that's a, that's gonna be a real uh, showstopper um, and that's what's what's up next <laughs> all right cover your ears darlings how to get tests <clears throat> you want to use I guess they're saying or doctors will do we'll get some sticky tape and they'll actually uh, tape they'll, they'll do multiple tags to your ass they'll sit there and just kind of on the anus hole just kind of stick it and pull it stick it and pull it and see if they could actually get these microscopic eggs out uh, they recommend what was it let me look at my notes here uh, they're checking for eggs uh, you want to do this first thing in the morning for three days in a row go to your doctor <laughs> help them start taping that thing man I mean uh, what if you're a guy with hairs on you I mean it's just <laughs> 
like he's just screaming. <laughs> What's happening? I got tested for parasites. Uh, so they take that, they stick it, they fold it in half, and then they put it under a microscope to see if they can get the eggs. Uh, since we're talking about eggs, there is one uh, one of the the uh, I don't know if it was toxoplasmosis. It was one of them that actually has barbs on them. So it said that these these ones uh, whether they're what what parasites will actually do is is what it is said will go to the entry of organs like where the your your colon connects to uh, your liver I guess I don't even know how that they go to those transitions and what happens is they'll sit there and they'll they'll make they'll lay eggs thousands of eggs some species I think like toxoplasmosis will actually unless it was just a soma uh, will actually lay eggs and each egg has a barb because otherwise the eggs would fall out so the evolution of this of this parasite is to lay the egg and let it hook on something like your intestines or inside your your blood vessels I guess so a lot of them could accumulate and cause coagulate or I guess not coagulation I guess so and stop the blood flow and could cause problems so um, how to get tested though uh, some people uh, in the holistic area are saying it's a full moon under a full moon Along with the werewolves and the vampires, I'm talking shit, but maybe it's got something to it. The gravitational pull of the Earth, the magnetics, our South Pole and North Pole are pulling these things out of your butthole. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, it could be. It, it, it could be. Who knows? But, you know, don't knock it till you tried it, I guess. I'm going to get some sticky tape when the full moon comes, spread my legs, and... Yeah, I'll spare you. Uh, okay, it by uh, doing this three times a day ups your chance of diagnosis by ninety percent. So um, that is well, we'll get into that. So the the best way to actually check for parasites, they're saying, uh, is through fecal matter. Where you, I guess, I don't even know. You smear some on there. They take it. I know it's disgusting, but they'll take that and they'll send it to a lab. Uh, there's blood testing. I actually contacted a. A holistic person and she says she actually has a microscope we can check right then and there which seems kind of cool you get to look down and see it. fifty dollars was the charge uh, she basically pricks your finger like they do for diabetics you smear it across a piece of glass and she looks inside your blood and see what the percentage of parasites that you have in you she claims that she had someone who was just riddled with them in the blood once they did a uh, purification the uh, parasites went away and the guy was back to normal health and praised hallelujah and everything was fantastic. So who knows, man? Who knows? I might try that for 50 bucks just to see. That'd be kind of cool. Um, muscle testing. Uh, I don't even know if I want to get into muscle testing. I think that's kinesiology, which has helped me with a, uh, a uh, condition I had uh, years, years ago. Uh, but uh, still kind of on the fence, I think, with that too. Um, so the CDC, Center for Disease Control and Prevention, oh, I definitely got some problems with these guys. Um, where should lab specimens be sent for testing? Blood testing is done by a variety of labs. Your healthcare provider will decide where to send the blood samples to. It'd be nice to know that I had a say in that. But anyways, diagnosis of any stool parasites may be difficult. By submitting several stool specimens, your chance of being diagnosed correctly is higher than by submitting just one sample. If you receive a negative lab report, your physician may choose and send another sample to a different lab for confirmation. So you see what I've learned is that uh, I got to see it to believe it with this whole parasite thing, especially with the, the information, the misinformation and stuff that's out there. So I kind of would, so, so basically, I would need, I would love to, I'd rather see my fecal sample or my blood sample and actually see what's going on. But they're say, the, the word is that if you go to your doctors, it's very, 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 very difficult to know if you've got parasites or not. It's very difficult for them to, to, to find that, to assess it. So a lot of stories are saying that they go to their doctors and they're, you know, they read all those symptoms that I gave you guys and they're like, oh my God, I'm infected with parasites. Let me eat another fucking ice cream and a hot dog on the way there and uh, figure out why I can't poop right or something. But I have, I'm just talking shit. I got to try to make it funny. 
but yeah, it's very difficult. Uh, so doc, people are saying they go to the doctors and the doctor says, there's nothing wrong with you. It's all in your head. Go home. You'll be fine. Um, or I think somewhere in here, I'm not sure if it's in my notes, they, they bring in the antibiotics and kill everything. Let the, 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 the atom bomb go off and just <laughs> annihilate all good bacteria, bad bacteria, everything. But we're getting it close to that. Um, let's see, how to treat. Uh, so far from what I've heard uh, from the podcast with Dr. Lee Lickens, or Professor Lee Lickens, was that herbs, uh, Chinese herbs in specific, they've been dealing with this for thousands of years, I guess, probably from all the raw fish and stuff, who, who knows. Uh, but they've got specific herbs that are known to be able to kill parasites or, or actually keep them in check is basically what they said. You can't ever just 100% just nuke them. There's no one thing like, bam, they're all gone. And yeah, so you have to, we're living with them. We have to accept that. But the, the best way uh, from what I've heard is to keep them in check. So if you have an infection, uh, you want to take these medications. Uh, you definitely want to take them short term though. Uh, we'll get into that too. But it's best to find out what type of parasite you have because these Chinese medicines, if you're going that route, are designed, the, the Chinese found out, you know, hundreds of years ago that certain herbs will kill certain parasites. So I made the mistake of going out and buying a bottle. Where is it? I got this bottle right here of, uh, uh, that's my CBD oil. Well, anyways, I bought a bottle of wormwood um, extract with, uh, I think it was the oak. Uh, we'll look in that. It's so I bought this stuff that I wish I would have known that it was pretty expensive uh, but certain certain uh, um, herbs will 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 treat certain parasites. So if you have uh, Two signs of certain parasites they could actually mix you a concoction and that's what you want to do is find and that makes a lot of sense to me You want to find out what you have first so you know what you're treating so what we move on is they uh, is supposedly they have the same DNA structure as us. Uh, and by the way, uh, well, we'll get into that. I don't want to digress. They have the same DNA structure as us. So by taking something long term, you can hurt your own DNA value. Um, by by poison, it's basically they're almost made up the same as us. So taking stuff that actually has other side effects long term is really, really, uh, really horrible. In fact, uh, I believe it's here in my notes, but I just want to get it out of the way and say it right now that one of these guys, these Chinese herbalists, had a patient who came in who was taking wormwood because somebody, either a doctor or, or a holistic person said, just keep taking it until you're, you definitely got parasites and just keep taking this until your symptoms are gone. He took it for a year and ended up dying of stomach cancer. And supposedly to these guys, it was actually proven that it was from the wormwood, from overexposure. So. Definitely something to take into consideration, guys. Don't just start listening to these people talk, blab their mouths off into the fucking air, filling your head up like a jelly donut, like Bill Burr says. Uh, you know, do some research. I hope that, that this stuff's helping you. Well, let's move on. Um, so, a bacterial infection is a whole separate, whole separate thing. Uh, it's easier to uh, isolate them, uh, to, like medications and things like that, because they're they're a different uh, structure, I guess. They're the medications or the herbs you take are specifically to kill these things because they're not so related. So basically, you know, they're not the same as us. It's a foreign matter. You're putting something in there, it kills it in the short term, and you're done. Whereas parasites, it's like it seems you're going to hurt yourself as well. I mean, you get we're locked into this this. Uh, uh, brown holy matrimony uh, so to speak uh, so dna isolated by and uh taking wormwood for an entire year yep there we go um so our par parasites can actually i just said our parasites huh if i do got them i'm naming them you guys frederick and jenny and uh <laughs> you know now i know who i've been talking to now i know who the voices in my head are it wasn't just me. It was all of us. And if, if I got to make a decision, we all got to make a group decision. I'm not making this on my own. Oh shit. And you could blame them. You motherfuckers. I was supposed to do this. We all agreed. I was against you guys, but it was voted 5,000 to one. I was saying no. You guys were saying, yeah, it's not me. It's the parasites. <laughs> yeah. I can imagine where people could run with that one. Uh, but yeah, uh, 
Herbs are meant for short term. Where were we? Where were we? I'm losing this. I'm losing it. Uh, so say, same DNA as us, bacterial infection, whole separate DNA. Your immune system uh, actually dodges these guys. There we go, yeah. Let's look down here. A parasite can dodge our immune system and it makes it that much harder for herbs. So basically, your the, these, these parasites will take these things called antigens from your blood and they'll, they'll, they'll pull them off your blood cells, I guess, and stick them all over themselves like camouflage. I mean, I am sorry, but what the fuck, dude? What the fuck? These guys are in your body camouflaging themselves with shit that's made of your body. So your immune system comes through. The police system, the, the cavalry, the army comes through, stops and scans them and looks at them and goes, Yeah, it's one of us. He's fine. And just takes off. I mean... How the hell does something like that even exist? I mean, the technology, I guess it's not technology, but the evolution to be able to do something like that. I mean, come on guys, come on, you with me? That's some crazy, crazy ass shit, man. I mean, think about it. Holy, I mean, all right, I'm off it. I'm off it, I'm off it. The herbs. Most herbs are meant for short term, we went over that. Some herbs have multiple uses, like driving down blood pressure, yes. So taking stuff long term, just like medications, it does all kinds of different things. So taking it long term can affect something else in your health. You know, you're trying to isolate them, we're gonna get them, we're gonna get them, we're gonna go in there and we're gonna bomb them, we're gonna kill everybody we see and then you're kinda killing yourself too, part of that, so very, Word of advice is it, that makes a lot of sense to me. Is just let's let's take this a little lightly before we start, uh, you know, packing uh, some ammo, getting our AK-47s, and going out there and causing waging war. So your immune system, yeah. If if your immune system can't take care of these parasites, if they're able to dodge your immune system, what the fuck do you think that they're going to do with herbs? If they've survived in us. Uh, since the beginning of time uh, which is where we're getting into we're able to live that fucking long and you think by throwing some little little herb at them that they can't just karate chop that shit away or, or figure some way to hide so yeah it's the best thing they're saying is your immune system for treatment um, try you, you got to be healthy you you, you got to take care of yourself and you get that your immune system will actually keep them in check sometimes I guess that maybe they don't uh, your immune system's not strong or something, then maybe you possibly do need herbs and things like that. And uh, who knows, maybe I'm so fucking crazy because I've got so many of these guys in me, I'll take some of that wormwood I bought and just, I'll send pictures. Nah, <laughs> nah. So anyway, yeah, your immune system at the, at the end is your best defense. Uh, it's the best thing you got, uh, in my opinion. I think it, it, it is with almost everything. It's, it's basically not what you're putting in your body the medications it's not herbs vitamins or anything and just health overall in my opinion it's your immune system that's able to balance your body if you think about it your body's just kind of like this vehicle you change the oil you put some new gas in it it's the motor uh, and everything that's that's propelling the the vehicle not what you put in it what do they hate oh what do they hate uh besides their lives having to really go and make a living inside of other people's living bodies maybe i don't know i'm trying to be fucking funny and it ain't working so yeah what do they hate what do they hate parasites hate gentian root ginger blackberries raw cabbage coconut oil aloe pineapple pumpkin seeds and papaya garlic and cup chinensis whatever the fuck that is are very powerful antiseptic anti-parasites, antiparasitic herbs that are also anti-everything that's bad for us, bacteria, candida, etc. Well, cure-all, cure-all, what do you know? Another one. Uh, maybe this these podcasts will, will never end. I keep getting worried that I'm going to run out of material even though I'm just getting started. And I'm like, oh my God, there's like, there's tons of things out there. Um, so what do they hate the most powerful anti-parasitic herbal ingredients i know of are wormwood clove essential oil black walnut and they should be taken together 
micro defense come buy from me so i can sell you you will have no more cramps aches and pains and suicidal thoughts probably uh probably not yeah a lot of these people uh, that, that's a quote i uh, took out from somewhere somebody's trying to sell some stuff there um so there's a there's obviously wormwood cloves essential oil and black walnut are the end all of end all parasites they all hate them you'll expel them you'll be good for the rest of your life uh i'm not sure about that <clears throat> anyways i don't want to beat anybody up too much like i said i may be full of shit maybe i'll take this wormwood and it'll i'll feel a heck of a lot better uh moving on though moving on we have uh ice so once we started icing uh fish from when you catch from the oceans i guess lakes fish in general uh that it lowered the amount it seems to kill them which i don't have in my notes here um the the the, the not the evolution but the traveling of parasites so to speak the the migration there we go thank you parasites for that for that insight yes the migration uh thank you jimmy uh it it, they, they they can't withstand the cold so if the cold comes over and uh, like say the earth froze or something like that which scientists are saying that it did um, these these parasites can't live they need a warm moist place it can't be dry they, it's got to be moist the place for them the host for them to live in they they basically just go from host to host so if the world ever froze over or, or in cold conditions you won't get really parasites um, which is interesting because I wonder, fish being uh, in the ocean, you know, always really, really cold. How the hell do they get parasites? Then you see the the paradox. The you start listening to some of this stuff and you start putting common sense to it. And it's like I kind of don't know, you know. Uh, you know, these fish are always at low, low temperatures. Um, that would be an interesting one to see if someone was able to capture a parasite put it inside of a vial and find out, give it everything it needs and expose it to different temperatures to see what environment it actually can live through all the way down to the point where it dies, you know? What if we get so uh, connected to these things we have to have, like, and we'd feel bad? There was one gal that actually said, you know, when they pass away, we'd have a funeral and all for it. But there was one gal that actually said uh, on the holistic side that when she took the herbs, she actually could feel in her body the pain of the parasites like as they were dying like you can feel it and you like you get nauseated and sick and like maybe because they're such a part of you or something like i said i'd never let out uh, i never dismiss anything i'm like yeah maybe you know i'm already starting to talk to mine so that tells you a lot about me uh look at the big brain on adrian um anyways moving on so we pat we did how to treat we did what they hate what they like refined processed crap food the body makes a poor host for parasites so they basically yeah there's nothing here. so i've got an argument on this as well there's actually um i guess you would say scientists archaeologists maybe i don't fucking know there's people basically who go study ancient ruins and they uh they actually specifically go for the toilet they are fascinated. I can't wait till I get home or get to this place and start digging in some shit. And I mean real shit. Petrified, old, historic shit. Um, if this is what, it, what did they say here? It likes processed foods and crap refined foods. The body does makes poor for hopes. If parasites only like sugars and things like that and they're finding stuff around in Egypt and all over these ancient ruins, there was not, I imagine, a lot of sugars and uh, processed, I know there was definitely no processed foods. There was no fucking Captain Crunch fucking 2,000 years ago, you know? Uh, so, I don't know, I'm like, yeah, whatever. Anyways, you guys get the point. But yeah, these people actually go and rehydrate human fecal matter, shit for all of us drop-offs uh, and drop-outs. And they'll actually rehydrate and find the eggs of the parasites inside the fecal matter. So, which actually goes to prove we've had them for very, very, very long. Um, so, basically, what people would do is they'd dig a g big, giant hole to finish up on that. Uh, I'm working on that kind of stuff on this podcast here. I know I start rambling all over. I get fired up, but I just want to go. Uh, but anyways, they dig a hole, and they shit in there, and it piles up, and they bury it. And it was a perfect way to entomb 
the wonderful brown magic gold that has parasites in it for parasite study. So that's how that all came to be. Uh, they like processed foods like white sugar, feeds them well. Parasites also like to feed off of damaged and decaying cells. Um, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm really tripping like how the hell did, you know, the moon, the cells, uh, who knows, maybe they cut one open and did an autopsy and found out after its tragic death Jimmy actually had cells that it damaged cells that it ate inside of its belly. I don't know. What if a parasite has a parasite? You ever think of that one? Uh, so that's it for that. We beat that one up enough. Let's go into. We already did the symptoms. Uh, how do you get them? The guinea worm west in West Africa starts off its life in water. Uh, how did it get in the water? I forget. Uh, anyways, it starts off its life. It looks like the information where I've got here. Starts off into the water, uh, enters a flea, a water flea. Uh, I believe it takes over the flea and then it just, uh, I guess through like fecal matter and stuff like that, maybe from people. Uh, so let's start it from the beginning. Somebody contracted or not maybe not contracted but ingested parasites they pooped they peed or defecated threw up or something next to a pond uh it went into the water the parasite goes and i believe a lot of them only have so long like something like 48 hours to actually find a host or it dies so they enter inside the the uh, water uh what did they say here into the water flea uh they destroy the flea uh they they kill it they feed off of it and they they uh they they go out they they get out of its host and it finds like a, a little woman in Africa with a basket, trying to sift water and attaches itself burrows into the skin and bam, bam you've got parasites. So uh, it forms a blister to release its babies, and be co and can be coaxed by wetting the blister constantly. They grab a bite, they grab a bit of the head or the tail. They tie it to a stick, slowly twisting it every day till they get it out. These are those ones, where is it here? Females can grow a meter long. Oh my, a meter long. Yeah, so this was, which one was this? This was the guinea worm. That's that one where you see them, uh, they start, so it's, I've seen it where they keep wetting it with, a, with, a, with water. Uh, once it starts to like make like a little boil there, I guess to release its babies and uh, they'll grab it and they'll stick a stick and just turn it like a half turn every day. And just pull start pulling and pulling and pulling this thing out you got to get it out otherwise if they rip it and kill it and then it decays in there it just it has to be uh surgically removed or it causes some crazy illness but yeah that that's uh how do we get them we get them from we get them they're supposedly what people are saying is from salads i'm gonna go eat a healthy salad be strong and fit and and uh, low carbs, and I mean, I've heard everything from baby carrots. They grind, they take actually large carrots and they get ground down to little tiny baby carrots. Uh, maybe they didn't clean this, the machines enough or something, sanitize them, and and the parasites attach themselves. We eat them, so we get we can get them from basically anything. There's in Hawaii the the rat lung uh, rat lung worm disease, I believe it is. Um, so basically. Uh, you can get it from all kinds of things. You get it from your cat's feces, the toxoplasmosis. Uh, yeah, from food, from, uh, I, I think someone can even be transferred from saliva. So if you're out there making out uh, with somebody and, I mean, the, the possibilities, I guess, for them are endless. There's lots of them, but it's very difficult for them to live. Uh, listen to Lee Likens in uh, that Yin Yang podcast. He actually explains really, really well. Uh, it was like, something like uh you're if you were a parasite you're born on planet earth in order to uh and you have food and everything you need but in order to have bit, uh, find a mate you have to go to mars uh once you go to mars and you do the the uh the, the duty you get knocked up you can't have your baby on mars you actually have to go to the find a way to get to the moon to have your babies once you have your babies you got to get back to earth so you can survive so it's this huge thing it's not like they're just uh, they've got it easy. Nobody's got it easy in this life, especially uh, parasites till they get inside you, you know, and children for the first 18 years of their life, it looks like. Anyways, I digress again. Let's get back. Uh, that's 
pretty much uh, all I have to say on uh, how do we get them. We can get them from multiple, multiple sources. And you guys know just as much as I know. I don't know which one to trust. But uh, water, you can get it from water. Drinking water, obviously, that's what Giardia is. Um, history. Uh, it's thought that parasites actually helped us through our evolution. And that uh, that's the reason why we've made it through so long. It's because our, uh, our immune systems have had to uh, basically fight. So the, the parasite is looking to live and survive. And it's under attack constantly by our immune system. Our immune system is constantly on defense because it's under attack by the, the parasite. So through evolution it is said that uh, that's why we survived so many uh, thousands of years in our evolution from having these parasites. All these bacterial infections and things have come and because of them, possibly, we are who we are. So they actually made us. Thank you, Jimmy. Thank you, Ralphie, Jenny, and all you guys. I'd like to thank the Academy of Parasites and everything for my well-being and my genetics from being passed on from thousands of years ago and making it and being here with you guys today. <laughs> My parasites are broadcasting out to your parasites. Maybe they're all watching this together. It's a big show. They're eating popcorn in inside your head. Uh, <laughs> sorry, guys. I've, I got to go there. So, yes, it's actually through evolution that uh, they think that they've actually helped us. So, in a sense, we almost have the wrong idea about what parasites are. Like there's some kind of evil villain thing that's out to kill us. I mean, that elephantitis shit, if you've guys seen it... Uh, this guy in the in the, the yin yang podcast was saying he actually got to observe a guy who got bit in the nuts. So his nutsack, if you guys know what elephantitis is, it's when that parasite gets in you, it dies and the, the it just causes someone's leg to be like ten times the size of the other for life. I mean, uh horrible, horrible shit. So some of them, yes, I guess, but for the most part, uh it doesn't seem like anybody's dying here in the United States from parasites that I know of. I think uh AIDS maybe that's that's uh, and cancer because so we got cancer and diabetes these are all concerns when you're worried about what I'm worried about my just my opinion you guys I'm not throwing it on there again this is a place of freedom this is the gringo show where we let everything go uh, yeah it's 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 up to up to us to accept what we want to believe in what we don't want to believe in but I look at it and I'm like you know maybe it's not so much as a war uh, you know, I mean, since I've got the last note on there, there's actually some people, I think, what it, let me read it out to you. It's called colonic disease. And uh, it's where these people actually go. They can't do it here in the United States anymore. So people come all the way out here to San Diego, probably right next to Gerson and the, uh, what is that, retina stuff that people are doing? They read your retina, retinology or something. Uh, but anyways, they can't do their work of healing people of cancer here in the United States. They have to go to Tijuana, the Mexico border. But obviously it seems that some people are going there to get actually pinworms. So they're going to a place, paying fucking money to get parasites. So basically the story on this is that uh, some people's immune systems, I guess, got so powerful, maybe through genetics or something, that it's got nothing left to fight. And this doesn't make quite sense to me that the immune system actually turns on its own body to attack. Like it needs a job to do like a fucking German Shepherd, like they say, uh, they're working dogs. Your immune system, I guess, is the same thing, you know. I've got nothing to do. I'm going to beat the shit out of myself. Uh, which is great, because if, if the immune system is turning on the body, would the immune system not be part of the body then? Wouldn't it know? Uh, if it's got these great powers to kick the shit, you've got Chuck Norris in there going, you know what, I'm going to completely destroy my environment, my home, which I live in, because i got not, nobody to fight. That just seems crazy, crazy, crazy. I mean, I've heard crazier things inside of us, uh, uh, crazier things about us, but uh, that's just, that's, it's just really weird. I would love to hear anybody's opinions on this stuff, but uh, so basically, yeah, people are going to get parasites to put in them. They're pinworms, I believe. Let me look at my notes here. Yes, they are pinworms. Uh, it hasn't been a full blown cure for people with this colonic disease. But it actually is helping. They put them in there and the immune system just goes, ah, oh, I'm going to stop fucking you up for a bit and I'm going to go beat the shit out of these things here. These, these nice little pinworms. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, it's like a Bruce Lee movie inside your intestines, I guess. Uh, but uh, the lifespan of these, of, of uh, um, 
parasites can be up to 25 years. I'm not sure which species. I haven't had time to... I mean, I started researching this thing and it's going off the rails, you guys. It just goes everywhere. Uh, insane, insane, insane. Go. There's a, a show called uh, um, Eating Us Alive. What's Eating Us Alive? Where is it? Where is it? Uh, Eating Us Alive. Na there's a National Gra Geographic documentary. There's something as a uh, zombie parasite. I mean, this stuff is fascinating. Like I said, I'm, I'm almost like, just, yeah, I just want to keep going. Uh, but I don't have the time. I got a fucking job and I got to go to work. Uh, but so let's move on. So I don't want to take up too much of your time either. Uh, there is the, we talked about people actually going to get parasites to pay to have them put in there. It just blows my fucking mind. Uh, so let's talk. I'm going to give you guys a little bit on Lee Lickens just so that you guys go see that par the, the podcast. Because like I said, it's very, very informational. Uh, thank you, you two, you guys out there for for the Yin and Yang podcast because it really turned it around for me. Uh, as soon as I saw your guys' shit, I was like, man, man, this really gave me something to... I mean, I was, I saw so much information. I was sold. I've got parasites and I'm going to have to deal with this. And you guys kind of changed stuff around. Uh, good job, guys. Good job. Uh, so what they were talking about in there is toxoplasmosis uh, is like it's a, a parasite that comes from cats. It lives in the cat's brain, um, and it controls the the uh, it controls mice. So it, its host has developed itself to live in that environment. Uh, this is the one that we went back. I think they said something like 60 million P Americans are infected with it. Um, so basically, it lives in the cat's brain. It has its babies in the body. It it. The cat goes, takes a dump. The parasites are, the eggs and everything are in there. I guess the mice come and eat the parasites. Uh, may have been in the saliva, I forget. But anyway, it's in some form or another, it is transferred over to a mouse uh, where it gets to be born and uh, inside the mice. And it actually goes into the mouse's brain now and controls the fucking mouse's brain. It's like this little thing. I forgot what cartoon was it where they inside the guy's head they opened it up and there's a little guy running the whole show that's basically what's what's going on guys in real life real science this is not make-believe shit and it controls the mice to make them run uh right up to cats so cats could eat them and it it's it's taken over that host so that it could be reborn and keep reproducing so it could be eaten by other cats and i mean you guys holy holy crap sorry again for all the swear words if you're new here i I'm trying to hold back. I just I think it's impossible. I, I I'm not gonna be able to. Sorry if I offend you guys. At least I'm not driving in my big ass truck today, uh, on my way to work doing this podcast with just tons of noise. Um, but anyways, yeah, it, they control the minds of the cats. And I'm gonna go on and tell you the little story about the ants. There's one that goes actually into an ant, and it lives inside the ant and controls the ant's entire body. It takes the tells the ant to go back to its colony so it could spread there. And then once it's done spreading its nastiness all over the place, sending its babies and eggs all over, uh, it takes the ant and goes to a certain elevation in the mountains uh, here. Of, I think it was Japan or China. I think it was in China. It goes to a certain elevation, makes the ant climb up uh, a certain amount of feet on a certain plant. It takes the ant's jaws, locks it down onto the plant so the wind doesn't blow it away, forces it to hold on there until uh, maybe an, an, an animal like a deer or a cow or a little sheep or something comes to eat that plant, digest it, and it starts its life cycle over again. I don't know about you guys, but that is like, that is crazy. Uh, take a look for yourself. Don't take my word for it, reading rainbows. Uh, I mean, crazy, crazy science. But getting back to Lee Lickens here, uh, the, the toxoplasmosis one is actually benign in humans. Uh, there's a lot of talk, which you should be freaked out with these fucking numbers that they're giving us. There's people with this and that. It's causing birth defects and there. He's saying it's completely benign. It doesn't want to be in, in us as much as we don't want it to be in us. Uh, it wasn't designed to go into our body and be able to reproduce. So there it, it resides, it lives, and it dies. The problem I have with it is that I think it lives in your brain. Ah. Uh, you know, like I said, Jeffrey, leave me alone. I'm trying to do a podcast here. You know, it's in your fucking brain. And when it dies, that's the thing I've got. When it dies, say after 25 years, uh, 
it what happens i mean what happens to your brain does this decaying matter in your fucking brain i think that's a part where i'm like yeah that could be something pretty bad you know what i mean that could be something bad uh but this is from uh from the professor lee lickens uh on that podcast uh so it's it's benign uh, let's see here. It definitely is not contagious, whatever, the, the toxoplasmosis, but it's one of the largest talked about ones that I've seen on the uh, on the internet. Um, so what do I have here? The life of a parasite to survive and reproduce uh, in a closed ecosystem. This, the parasite has to live and survive in a, and reproduce in a closed ecosystem. It has a very hard time finding new hosts, and its main goal is to get out of you and get eaten so it could spread. So uh, people are saying there's these these parasites stuck in you, and they multiply, and they're all going to live in you, and they're all just going to make you swell and swell and swell and blow up like a balloon. Uh, not a, you know, some of the, some people are concerned about that, but I guess what this guy's saying, Lee Lickens, is that they want to get that shit out of you as soon as possible so that they can go through that. 48 hour or whatever species is they got to find something to reproduce otherwise its species dies off that makes a lot of sense to me it also makes a lot of sense to me that lee lickens was saying that it lives in you and it only takes enough to survive it's going to eat stuff it's going to maybe it excretes some kind of a uh, 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 chemical in your body a reaction that makes you want to eat sugars maybe that is real it's i'd imagine if it's stuck in there and it's that smart to dodge your immune system it can manipulate your body to say hey man let's go to baskin robbins and get some ice cream i'm hungry in here i'm tired of the shit you've been giving me you know but it uh it basically if it if you die it dies so and if we've lived for thousands and thousands of years in the evolution of its intelligence i think that it it probably pretty knows if, we, if we've got parasites uh that that, that that that's the factor that it's going to have to figure out i mean these things seem pretty intelligent to me um so yeah it, it, the first thing it wants to do is get get you get it uh its babies out of you not live in you uh yeah the worst thing it could do is kill its host uh so let's go on some more of these notes. We're getting towards the end here, guys. I'm almost done for you. Hopefully this is helping you out. I told you the ant story. Going back on Lee Lickens here, it's not having parasites that makes you sick. It's what the parasites are doing to your body, like blocking your intestine tract by growing in numbers. Um, the schistosoma parasite can live up to 25 years in your body. They cause no damage in, in and of themselves. Yeah, the females can lay all the eggs. I think we went through all that with the barbed hooks and things like that. So that it has somewhere to stick, be born, and I guess uh, pass through you. I wonder if they would war. Imagine if they're smart enough. Like, there was like, they started taking over territories. Like, dude, I got the brain. The brain's mine. The liver's mine. Hey, Charlie, you come on the wrong side of town like, like gang members. Bam! Did you hear what happened to fucking Bill? He got fucking whacked by the Southsiders. It seems like if they're that smart, that's what they would do, huh? I don't know, but you never know. So the last part is it part of this. Oh, and if they didn't lay eggs, they could live in your body forever without giving any damage. So if they didn't lay any eggs, um, they would actually, according to Lee Licken's knowledge, they would they're actually benign. If they didn't lay, lay the eggs and all that, you you would be fine. You would they would you'd live together in a symbiotic relationship, you know, holding hands like in that uh, uh, Zoloff commercial. You know, you're walking down the beach. You're fucking like 70 years old. He's depressed. She's depressed, but they're happy. They're still together. You know, now they're taking Zoloff. They're not. You're walking on the beach, pant legs rolled up. You and your parasite. You know. <laughs> oh. I wonder if it's if this has if parasites have anything to do with monogamy, you know? Maybe you're like maybe they're making you cheat or something like people could probably blame that on their parasites. Oh my god, my parasite made me do it. Or what if you're with somebody you're with your wife or your husband and it's like, well we're also with uh you know, these guys. <laughs> probably not something you wanted to share. But anyways guys, with that weirdness on there, um it's uh I I I think it's pretty crazy uh, listening to all this stuff. That's that's pretty much all the information I got there. What I'm telling next is just some opinions I have, like with immune system. Then that really trips me out that your immune system, if it is 
turns on the body like that it has nothing to fight uh is that a part of you like actually another thing i heard too i think it was from this podcast that i want to add in here is that uh in third world countries where we think we're all safe here in the united states nobody could do we'll nuke them well we've got the stuff yeah we're not safe we got parasites but we don't have as many as they do in third world countries but the interesting study is that they don't have some of the chronic illnesses that we have like uh i think arthritis was one of them uh I'm not sure about high blood pressure. I don't know all the particulars. Like I said, this, the information I've given you is probably way more than you probably asked for, but uh, they're basically saying that because these parasites, they, because of uh, indigenous foreign people of uh, these third world countries have these, their immune systems are probably so strong that they, they don't have these. So what a trip, what does that mean? What does that mean then that uh, Maybe possibly like this gets me going off on, on, on other things like medications and herbs and things. When you get sick, we go and take this medication. We take uh, herbs and things like that to, to heal up really fast. What if, what if our immune systems are being compromised because of things like that? What if you actually need to be sick? What if you just, you just let it go, take the day off, take the two, three days off, let it run its course, let the mucus run out of your face and everything. You, you're at, you, feel like a fucking toddler for a week or something, a helpless baby, uh, but maybe inside of you in the background, your immune system is building itself. It's getting exercise. I mean, I think someone, I heard somewhere that uh, that Stephen Hawking was saying that the brain is like a muscle, and I, I kind of believe that. You guys probably already know this. I'm, maybe I'm the dumb, the, the, uh, the drop off that I missed that uh, memo, but uh, everything's like a muscle. So what if your immune system, as they're saying, is a muscle and we're never giving it a chance to work out we keep helping it along helping it along so we got this instead of mike tyson in there chuck norris or bruce lee we've got uh i don't know david thewlis <laughs> sorry david <coughs> oh, excuse me you know what if we got one of those a little nerd or something in there with a the pocket protector you know that's our immune system that's the guy there's someone trying to break in and you got this this ikea guy you know what i mean this this little preppy little guy with little penny loafers on and he's supposed to hey you know you're not supposed to be in here uh <laughs> you know maybe that's what's happening i mean this this can go on uh this opens up lots of doors for me i would think i'll save them for a new podcast but today i just wanted to share with you guys what i got from parasites and i hope that helps you um that's all i got to say guys i'm gonna just put a bunch of links in the bottom uh of some stuff you guys can watch uh just getting started and um I'm loving all this and I hope this helps you guys out. Go out there and be friends with your parasites if you got them. Done.